What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another episode of the Finternet. <laughs> Get it? Because, like, sharks and the internet. Like, like the, the, the fin. T okay, forget it. Today, we're going to be talking about something super duper sad, <laughs> which is the final Fazbear Frights books. Uh, in the series, the final Fazbear Frights book in the series. <laughs> it's unfortunate that it's going to end at 12, but let's be honest, we got kind of lucky when Scott told us that it's going to go more than five, like we first thought. On the plus side, we will be getting a conclusion to the Stitch Wraith story in the next two books, but the 12th book is strange, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about why. Before we talk about an animatronic shark, I need to remind you to subscribe if you have not already. I'm about 60 subs away from 10,000 subscribers, so I really appreciate it if you press that button for me. Uh, also in the description below, you will see a link to Ozone merch, but uh, it's only really me like testing the waters, <laughs> uh, rather than pushing out actual stunning pieces of merch. Um, and stuff like that, so just go down there and buy some if, if you like it. Uh, but it's kind of just me testing around with some stuff, so yeah. Anyway, let's continue with the video. I promise there are no more shark puns. I want to start by addressing how we have the cover for the 12th book in the first place. Now, it's been revealed that on the 7th of December, we're actually going to get a full Fazbear Fright box set. Uh, which I'm definitely copying. This set contains all 11 books plus an exclusive 12th book called Felix the Shark. Uh, we will talk about that in a minute, but before we do that... <laughs> guys, this image is such a mess. Uh, it's it's very cursed. Into the Pit is in three different colours. Fetch is renamed to Tex, for no reason whatsoever. 1.35am has a different coloured title to the rest of the book. Step Closer has a completely different circle colour to the rest of the book. And then just as you get a sense of security with the next few books being completely fine, Gumdrop Angel appears in a white with a single letter in blue. <laughs> I mean, guys, how does this even happen? I guess we could let them off with a few of these, really. Um, it's just formatting issues and stuff. But getting the entire name of the fetch book incorrect is just ridiculous. How was any of this even <laughs> approved? Anyway, it, it does make me laugh, uh, but hopefully it will be fixed in the final version because I'm not spending $120 on this. Anyway, I will save my ranting for the Dark Rooms podcast, which you can also check out in the description below. It's a FNAF style podcast starring me, Inky Ink, Psychic and Underscore. Anyway, let's turn our focus onto this derpy cover with a derpy name. Imagine ending the series with a book called Felix the Shark. It does sound like a children's book. <laughs> Actually, I do want to say something that I did just think of, uh, and, and that's that this title may not actually be the real title. Um, they got the fetch book wrong, so we can't really rely on these titles <laughs> that much. So it's probably called Felix the Shark, but it might be called something completely different. Assuming it is called Felix the Shark, I feel like this is going to be another story like Fetch or 1.35am, where the shark kind of starts off innocent and then becomes the antagonist to the story. If you're wondering whether the shark is actually an animatronic, that's a stupid question. One of the eyes has come off to reveal wires behind it. Um, so it's a it's a wired being, if you will. The damaged flesh of the monster around the, the mouth actually reveals jaws that are metallic. Something I did point out is that Felix actually has teeth behind his real teeth, uh, which reminds me a lot of the withered animatronics um, in particular, where you can actually see the endos inside of the robots. That's just something to point out. I, I don't think it's going to mean much to the story, but we do know that this is definitely a real animatronic with a with an actual endoskeleton. Another thing I want to point out is that in this cover he's perceived to be floating. Now this could be an animatronic that's being held up by strings in the pizzeria or whatever. Could just be like this this monument. That's not the right word. Alternatively, it could actually be a swimming animatronic. Now we've seen in FNAF AR that a lot of robots seem pretty indestructible. Some of them can withstand fire, others can spend 24 hours in Chernobyl, 
and others can become trees. Somebody help me, I'm being robbed. I'll save you. Tree powers activate. But on top of all of that, we have some animatronics that can actually swim and survive underwater. They're robots and they are able to live underwater. That's kind of mad. It's possible that this shark is a robot that can swim underwater. It's not out of the question. I, I didn't know what I... Just forget it. Move on. Cut. Cut the... Cut the... If he can swim though, I'm not really sure what the plot of the story might be. Maybe some guys go fishing and then they catch this metallic shark and it actually kills their family or something. Don't don't look at me like that. <laughs> it's a good idea. I, it's a good idea. Either way, it's possible that this story just doesn't matter at all. That's right. These are official stories written by the writers of other stories, but this 12th book is actually just a bonus book containing scrapped content from these books. These are stories that they have written but didn't end up putting in the actual books. Maybe it's because some of the stories they wrote were too outlandish or maybe they didn't fit in with the timeline or other theories or they just weren't cool stories in general. For all of those reasons, I still question the con canon canonicity. That's, that's the word. I question the canonicity of the stories but the thing, the thing that contradicts this, I feel like, is that the stories were written with the intention of becoming real stories. They were, they were written to be canon. Surely if they're scrapped, then they're technically still second-handedly canon. It's a weird situation, but I won't be surprised if these stories are just there for your pleasure rather than for lore content. I do want to say that I think the Stitch Raid stories are going to be wrapped up in the 11th epilogue. Uh, meaning it's possible a lot of the stories that we've seen plus these stories aren't going to be in the Stitch verse at all. <laughs> I guess we're just going to have to wait and see, but I'm pretty excited for these last three books. Um, I, ho I hope we get some big reveals in them. So speaking about the Stitch verse, I am actually going to be making a video on that soon, and it's going to it's going to be a pretty bulky video. So uh, please subscribe so that you don't miss out on that. I hope you enjoyed this video, tell me what you think about Felix the Shark and the canonicity of the last book, and I will see you all later, goodbye!